a friend of mine once said, Pokemon Nuzlocke runs are fun. You should try streaming those. I am no longer talking to that friend. I mean, he was right, but he neglected to mention how frustrating and addictive Nuzlocke can be. I thought I would start with the greatest generation though. Gen 1 in Leaf Green. It was a trial and I didn't complete it. Let's see how bad I did. I'm Chris from Northern Geek Life and this is Pokemon Leaf Green Nuzlocke The Fails. Let's go over the rules I gave myself. It's a soft Nuzlocke for the first try. So don't expect too much. Now standard is the first rule. If a Pokemon faints, it's dead and can no longer be used. Neither has to be released. I chose to keep them all separate in a box on the PC. Number two, only the first Pokemon in any new region can be caught. If it runs, tough luck. Number three. All Pokemon must be nicknamed to create a stronger bond. Number 4. No saves coming. If a strong Pokemon dies, it, I can't just go back to a previous save state. Number 5. HMs are only usable on Pokemon I caught. If I can't progress because my Pokemon can't learn the right HM, the run is over. Number 6. All Pokemon fainting is the end of the run. Even if I have Pokemon in PC storage. If I wire it out, it's over. And number 7. The random starter. The last digit of my trainer ID determines my starting Pokemon. 1 to 3 is grass, 4 to 6 is fire, 7 to 9 is water, and 0 is a free pick. All clear? Okay, let's get started. With number 2 being the last digit of my trainer ID, I get Bulbazar, who I name Frogger. In the rival fight, we are both down to the last hit we can take. Luckily, in the final round, Frogger outspeeds Charmander and takes the victory. Already a close call? This might be hard. After a brief work experience at UPS, I get the Pokédex and some Pokéballs from Professor Oak. And I set off for my very first catch. Hoping to get a decent Pokémon, I run into Redata, which I promptly kill for no obvious reason. Wow, I suck at this. No more encounters on this route. On the next route, I find and capture a Mankey, who I name Tyson. If you don't know why I named it Tyson, your knees are probably still in very good condition. In Viridian Forest, I find a Caterpie, who I name Monarch, in honor of the butterfly she will soon turn into. That's three Pokemon in the team already. Remembering I forgot to grab a Pokemon between Viridian Forest and Viridian City, I rectified that mistake by catching Rattata. Splinter joins the party as my fourth Pokemon. I fight my way through Viridian Forest, fighting trainers along the way and staying on top of my antidote situation. I quickly find myself in Brock's gym. In the fight, before facing the Rocky gym leader, I start with Tyson, thinking she could easily beat up a Geodude. I learn the error of my ways at the end of a hard hitting tackle. Frogger, I guess it will all be up to you. A Vine Whip takes out Geodude. Another Vine Whip takes Sanjuru well under half HP. Due to the sand attack, a follow up misses, but I manage to connect with the third one. Sanjuru goes down. A quick stop at a Pokemon Center later, it's time to face Brock. Brock has a tendency to have a Geo Dude use Defense Girl on the first turn. I leave Tyson out to get some experience out of the fight, thinking it's safe to do so. In the second turn, I decide to risk a rock throw or a heavy tackle. This works out great, as tackle didn't hit as hard as it did in the previous fight. 
Titan obviously outspeeds you, dude, on turn 3. And takes him out with another low kick. One Pokemon down, one to go. Out come Frogger and Onyx. I decide to play it safe and set up a Leech Seed, which does not connect on turn 1, but does on turn 2. As it turns out, this was pretty useless. One Vine Whip in turn 3 cleanly takes out Onyx. I should have known that and not waste 2 turns setting up. But with that sloppy play, the Boulder Badge is mine. This run was going too well to last. The very first trainer of the next route sends out a Pidgey that dies to a low kick and a critical low kick. I leave Tyson out for the next Pidgey, thinking she would survive a critical hit if need be. I forgot, however, that Pidgey at this stage already learned Gust. Critical Gust takes out Tyson. RIP, buddy. Gone too soon. It isn't many fights later that Monarch evolves into a Metapod, and a couple of levels after that into its final form, Butterfree, which immediately learned Confusion. Later on the same route, Frogger evolves into an Ivysaur. Right before Mount Moon, I snatch up a Pidgey and call it Dove. Anyone who has ever been to Mount Moon knows my next catch. Can't escape the zoo bad. There's only one name that sounds appropriate. Welcome to the team, Bruce Wayne. I don't encounter anything my Pokemon can't handle in the mountain. To get the fossil, I face off against Pokenard Miguel. Monarch opens up with a confusion that confuses Grimer and brings him in the yellow. Grimer tries to hit the ducks around his head, but hits himself instead. On the second turn, Monarch finishes Grimer off with another confusion. Voltorb comes out next for Miguel, but he proves no match for my Frogger. Frogger gets off two Vine Whips, while Voltorb uses charges on both turns. Another easy win for my team. Coughing is the last one out, and I switch back to Monarch. A confusion brings Coffin down quite fast. Coffin retaliates with a poison gas, which, as the name suggests, poisons Monarch. I choose not to heal the poison until after the battle, as the tackle is enough to take out Coughing. I take the Dome Fossil for myself and leave the Helix Fossil for Miguel. Time to get out of here. Just outside Cerulean City, I stumble upon a Spiro. Another bird to catch? But sure, why not? I call her Talon and move into the city. The first trainer in Misty Gym doesn't stand a chance. One vine with for Horsey and another one for Shelter is enough to clear the way. One Vine Whip isn't enough for a next trainer to Coldeen though. I fear the horn attack, but Coldeen just sets up with a Tail Whip. In the second turn, Frogger finishes Coldeen for another easy victory. I don't feel particularly confident about Misty Stormy, so I decide to go for the Rival Bell instead. This was a mistake. I leave Monarch in for the first fight against Pidgeotto. I wanted to get an early poison powder in. It does connect, but not before Pidgeotto almost one-shot my bug with a gust. I heal for two turns, while Pidgeotto hits me with a sand attack in the first turn and another gust in the second. I switch out to Frogger, who takes a weak quick attack upon entering the battle. I know Vine Whip wouldn't hurt Pidgeotto too much, so I go for a tackle instead. He hit back with a gust. I decide to risk it because of Pidgeotto's remaining health after poison. Frogger hits another tackle, it's a low roll, and Pidgeotto survives with a sliver of health. 
He retaliates with a gust, knocking Frogger out. That's my strongest Pokemon gone. Out comes Monarch. Just in time to see Pidgeotto die from the poison. Great kill, buddy! Monarch gains what I in the moment know to be a useless level up. She also learns Stun Spore. Thinking it might give Monarch a chance, I decide to go ahead and let her learn the new move. Goodbye Harden, hello Stun Spore. My rival sends out Charmander next. The game asks me at this point if I want to switch out my Pokemon. I desperately want to, but I got absolutely nothing that could take on Charmander, so Monarch stays in. I try to go for a stun spore, but never get the chance to. Monarch goes down to a scratch. I send out Talon next, hoping she might do some damage at least. In all fairness, she does, if only because Charmander waits to turn with a growl. Talon's pack does very little. In the next turn, Talon goes down to an Ember. Next up is Splinter. But you can probably see where this is headed. Scratch takes out the little rat. Not many options left now. Well, I call them options, but at this point they are just victims really. Let's go Dove! And here comes the Ember! Wow, that did not last long. In comes Bruce Wayne, who of course immediately dies to an Ember. Wait, what? He doesn't? Okay! Leech alive, don't fail me now! Wow, one point of hell back. And here comes the Metal Claw. And that's the end. I fail miserably in my first attempt to a Nuzlocke. I hope I can do better the next time. I definitely made some errors. Well, live, learn and try again. But the results of the try again part are for another video. So if you like this, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And share this channel with your friends because it does help us grow. I've been Chris from Northern Geek Life. Goodbye, my friends.